you know we got to talk about end time prayer life because it's all about him. We need to stay connected. When I talk about end time prayer life, I'm talking about the quality, the quality of our prayers. You know, this summer, the Spirit of God led me to study the book of Daniel, Pastor Rogers, and I thought I'd be getting into all the prophecies, and I, that was my intent. You know, you start out doing one thing, God will take you where he wants you to go, if you will cooperate. So he had me focusing on the life of Daniel, and, and specifically the, 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 the prayer life of Daniel, the quality of Daniel's prayer life, because Daniel went through some stuff. We're going through some stuff. And it was the quality of his prayer life is the quality of prayer life that you and I must have in these last days. What do you say? And the only reason, the only reason that Daniel made it through, because he got it, <laughs> it was his relationship with God. Not because he was a Jew, not because he was a vegetarian, not because he worshiped on Sabbath, but because of his love for God that made the Sabbath relevant, that made his diet relevant. It all went back to his relationship with God. So I hope we all get it, that, that your best life, your best life is knowing that your relationship with God empowers your prayer life. It's your, if your prayer life is weak, you better look at your relationship. If things aren't going right with your life, you don't think you should be getting this or that, take, take a look at how you were treating your God. How much time do you spend with you, your God? Are you listening to what your God has to say to you? To you. Spirit of God, help me to focus on the ethos, the character of Daniel. And you know, that brother wanted to be one with God which impacted his pathos, his passion, his, his lifestyle, that he kept growing in integrity. He kept growing in holiness. You know, Daniel just wanted to do the right thing because it was the right thing to do. Because it all went back to his relationship with God. What about you? Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, may our ethos, May our character reflect your character so that our pathos, our, our passion, our lifestyle, that we grow in integrity, that we grow in faithfulness without compromise. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn your Bibles. Remember, if there's one place you should bring your Bible, it's to C-H-U-R-C-A. Wouldn't that make sense? Turn your Bibles, whether it's the, you know, this kind. Remember, remember these? Or, or technology. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. Daniel 9, verse 2. Once again, Daniel was facing trouble, and we are facing an intensification of trouble. Trouble is just going to intensify. That's why our relationship with God must intensify. It says, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord. Can somebody say the word of the Lord? Wow, isn't that weird? The word of the Lord. You and I have the privilege of studying, reading, the word of the Lord. Through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish how, how long? 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. So we find Daniel studying the word of the Lord. Uh, see, I'm talking about end time prayer life. The quality of our life. See, our prayer life must be rooted in scripture. Sometimes we make the mistake of our prayer life be rooted in our experiences. And our experience can go up and down, good or bad, but God's word doesn't change. 
So our prayer life must be rooted in Scripture. Didn't Jesus say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word? And then the Bible tells us that Jesus would get up early in the morning to what? Pray. But see, his prayer life was rooted in the word, not in his experiences. Is your prayer, prayer life rooted in the word of God or in, the, in your experiences? The word of God. The word of God. In the prayer, it's, it's the word of the Lord in prayer. It's like the washing machine, like putting your clothes in the washing machine. I can vaguely remember my mom had a huge white tub, and, and she had this board. And I could vaguely remember seeing her wash clothes on the board, and I, I could, didn't make sense. I would ask her, what are you doing? We had a washing machine. She just looked at me. You know, some folk don't have washing machines, and so the washing machine is their hands. And it's that agitation of the clothes with the water and the soap that agitates that makes the clothes clean, that agitation. It's the word of God and prayer that makes us clean. See, we have to let the word of God, we have to let our prayers be rooted in Scripture and let the word, let the word in our prayer agitate us agitate us so that we can be clean. Jesus said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. God's word will make you clean. And that's what we try to do as a church family. We have a whole time on Sabbath to worship God in the study of his word at Sabbath school. Come to Sabbath school and be clean. And then on Wednesday night, Wednesday night, no worry, Wednesday, we have a time. We read scripture from our Bible. You all still reading the, the Bible calendar scripture? I hope you are. If you haven't, just start today and start reading. Amen? Just start today and start reading. Study of God's word every Wednesday. Because faith comes by hearing will make you what? Clean. Your, 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 your prayer life must be rooted in Scripture, not in your experiences. The quality of your prayer, so that you will not compromise God. Because it's all about God. And it, we have no time to compromise our relationship with God. There is no shortcut when it comes to God. Have you found that out yet? No shortcut. There's no shortcut. There's no shortcut. If there could have been, Christ would have not went to the cross just so that you and I could have this personal relationship with the God of heaven and earth. So we find Daniel reading the word of the Lord through the prophecy Jeremiah, and he was reading, he knew, he understood that God promised the captivity of Israel for 70 years, God put up with their, with their idolatry and, and, I mean, what does God put up with you? I mean, you don't have to say anything. Don't say it. Don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. But think about all the stuff God puts up with you and me. Kept putting it up, putting up, kept forgiving him, kept forgiving Israel, and they kept just treating God any way they want. So he says, okay, I'm going to let Babylon deal with you. I'm going to deal with Babylon, but I'm going to let them deal with you. Story after painful story probably is reflecting in, in Daniel's mind. and He's, he's heard 70 years. He, he, he read the prophecy, 70 years, the prophecy of Jeremiah 25, 11, and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon. How long? 70 years. He read Jeremiah 29, 10, for thus says the Lord when he, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord, but just, just thus says the Lord. 
Sometimes we just go right by that so quickly. Thus says the Lord. After how long? Are completed at Babylon. I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. See, Daniel was convinced God keeps his word. What about you? No, serious. Do you believe God keeps his word? I mean, when things are going bad, that God keeps his word. So he, he studied. And so Daniel can't make sense of it because he knew because of the prophecy, 70 years, 70 years, 70 years, and then God gives him this vision, Daniel 8, 14. Remember that vision? It tripped the brother out. And he said to me, for 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Oh, wait a minute. Day equals a year. Wait a minute. Pastor Roger's right. 70 years, and now 2,300? Whoa. Whoa. He can't make sense of what happens. And, and notice Daniel's reaction, seeing how the 70 years has gotten extended. How do you act when God, you know, God says this and then it gets extended? Check out Daniel's reaction, Daniel 8, 27. And I, Daniel, did what? Mercy. Over a prophecy, not over his girlfriend leaving him. Over a prophecy, not because he lost his job. And I, Daniel, fainted and was what? Ain't talking about a mild headache, y'all. Many days afterward, I rose up, went to work, did the king's business, and I was astonished by the vision. So you see where the brother's at? He couldn't make sense of it. We got the promises of God. We, we know things are going to happen. And then something dreadful happens to us. He's trying to make sense to us. Where, what do you do when stuff like this happens? Now, pay attention where Daniel goes. Verse 3. Daniel 9, verse 3. Then I set my face toward the Lord. Hallelujah. Wait, wait, just... He goes to the Lord. Where do you go? I know, Google. Oh, yes, you do. Then I set my face toward the Lord to make my request by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. I'm talking about End time prayer life. What does it take to pray in such a time as these? We got to be in the word. The word has to be in us. And our prayers must be rooted in word. And then he prays. But not only he prays, he fasts. He fasts. Scripture strengthens our prayer so we can pray and ask God to help us understand the word of God, which will help us deepen our relationship with the Lord. And so as a church family, I would like us, I would like you, I would, I would like to invite you to join the elders and the, and the, and the uh, uh, church board to join us on Wednesday and fast. And there was silence in heaven. I mean, you pick the time, and it's not the length of the fast. It could be as long as, I'm just saying, join us. I know some of you fast already, but just, I mean, just, just join us. Just join us fasting. Where we're reading the word together on Wednesday night. We're praying together. Just, just fast. Just think, just, would, you, would you pray about it? Would you pray about it? Fasting. Again, I'm not, I didn't say fast all day, did I? I, I mean, you and the Lord. Whatever it is, but just we're doing it together. We're just fat. So, again, no time. It's up to you. It could be as long as you need, but we got, we, we, we're talking about end time prayer life. The quality, what does it take to be overcomers so that we, you, we, you, we will not compromise? Because the compromise is coming. 
Do you hear me? Not everybody goes to church is going to stand faithful. What does Sister White say? Not one in 20 is converted on the church rolls. So now is the time. My mom had to say, start out like you can hold out. Now is the time to do the things that will ensure you that you will not compromise, regardless of what happens. So Daniel is praying with the word of God. He's, he's praying, and he's, he's praying the word, and uh, 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 he's fasting. You and I cannot do any less. If you look at Daniel chapter 1, remember Daniel chapter 1? It's not just Daniel, it's his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Hazariah. Think about it. Them, them four, them boys, them guys, they were, they were royalty. Weren't they, weren't they of royal family? Nobility? Think about it. People pray for money, then as soon as they get money, they stop praying. You ever notice that? Talk about church folk. Talk about some Adventists too, you know. Doesn't it say uh, Daniel and Hananiah and, 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 and Mishael and Hazariah? See, those are the real names. I'm not, I'm not just saying, uh, 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 you know, not, I'm not talking their slave names. The real names. The Bible says that they were handsome. Huh? People pray to look good. Don't they? Come on. huh? And when they think they look good, I said think they look good, then they stop praying. I'm all that now. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I look good. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Huh? Carrie Ann, what, what am I? Huh? Huh? So I'm talking about these young guys. That anywhere from 12 to 17, right? They're young. They're young. They're young. They're young. We know Daniel knowing prophecy, right? But you know, there's something else that these guys knew. They understood personally unanswered prayer. And when I, when I talk about uh, end time prayer life, you and I must come to terms, what do we do with unanswered prayer? What do we do with it? That when we experience unanswered prayer, we're still in love with Jesus. We continue to be loyal to God. We continue to share our faith beyond the walls, no matter how we may feel, because it's all about our relationship with God. You see, these brothers understood unanswered prayer. They experienced profound pain, profound disappointment with God. They did. They did. Think about it. When, when Nebuchadnezzar came and attacked Jerusalem, they prayed. Don't you think they prayed? But what happened? Israel was defeated. Unanswered prayer. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and, and Hazariah does anybody know Daniel, the name of Daniel's parents? What about their siblings? We don't know, because they were probably killed. I'm talking about unanswered prayer. That Daniel then prayed for victory, prayed for their family to be protected. And what happened? What about their homes? Destroyed. I'm talking about unanswered prayer. I'm talking about Daniel, who we always talk about prophecy, and it's true. But Daniel understood what it, what it feels to pray to God and get unanswered prayer. They were captured, traveled 600 miles from Jerusalem to Babylon, and then they get recruited by the king to learn Chaldean, to learn the history to learn the knowledge. Huh. And then, <laughs> and then, 
The king almost makes them a deal that they can't turn down. Eat my food. Drink my stuff. Johnny Walker Red. No, probably King, king Nebuchadnezzar Blue. No, King Nebuchadnezzar Gold. Do my lifestyle. Now think about it. Unanswered prayer. Unanswered prayer. Couldn't this be the great time that these young guys could have used unanswered prayer as the excuses to compromise? If there was ever a time to compromise, they had all the reason. They could say, we're young. We're young. Think about it. They could have said God is unfair. Huh? What if they, couldn't they have said we don't deserve this? Huh? Or how about this? How about this? You ready? God will understand. I mean, we're, we're captured. We're kids. I lost my parents. I ain't got no credit card. I got no keys. So God has to understand this situation. It's coming our way, y'all. It's coming our way. And if you're thinking on excuses now, you better start repenting and understand your relationship with God. How valuable is your relationship with the God of heaven? And what does the Bible say? Daniel 1, verse 8. Daniel purposed in his heart. He determined that he was not going to defile himself. What about you? No, seriously, what about you? Have you made a decision that regardless of what happens, you will not compromise your relationship with God? Your relationship with God. He refused. And that's, that's, that's what kept the Sabbath alive because of his relationship. And remember what he asked the king? Remember what he asked? Ten days. Ten days. Ten days. See, they understood. See, and we have to, that God is not some cosmic bellhop at our beck and call. See, they understood that God is not an ATM where we ask the master for this and ask the master for that. That when things go wrong, that is not the time to compromise. But just to stay in on your relationship. Now is not the time for you and I to go along to get along. But to be faithful and share our faith beyond the walls. Because, see, Daniel knew that God keeps his word. And so what does Daniel ask for? Ten days, right? Ten days. Ten days. This is a personal crisis. Is anyone going through a personal crisis where you were tempted to compromise? And he says, hey, let us, let us eat God's way. Let us live God's way. Ten days. Ten days. Ten days. Ten days. And what does the Bible say? After ten days... King Nebuchadnezzar himself met with these boys, and he talked to them, and he quizzed them, and they aced it. Didn't they? They got a 5.0. They aced it, and they were stronger and wiser than the rest of the musicians and, and sorcerers. We're talking about the end time prayer life, the quality of our prayer life, where you and I Right now, we refuse to compromise. Regardless of the era, er, area, we refuse to compromise. That God is more important than anything or anybody else. And if we, were, if we mess up, we just repent and live for God. Remember Daniel 9, verse 2. Daniel is, is praying and, because he studied the scripture. And, and perhaps another, another time comes into his mind. With, 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 with Daniel. Remember? Daniel, uh, I mean, uh, Nebuchadnezzar receives a, a dream. Remember that dream of, of four world powers? And, and it disturbs him. 
And so he goes to his people and say, tell me about the dream. Interpret the dream. And he, and he doesn't trust his own people, Nebuchadnezzar. So he says, I'm not going to tell you guys anything. You just tell me what the dream is. They said it was impossible. Remember that? And the king gets so furious, he's enraged, he orders an execution to wipe out everybody. All the, all the sorcerers, all those in, in leadership, no, no more. And guess who that included? Daniel, and Hananiah, Mishael, right? Hazariah included them too. Sometimes stuff happens to us beyond our control. Huh? Anyone going through a crisis? See, now this is work-related, right? This is work-related. Anybody have trouble at work? Anybody have trouble at school? I mean, this trouble at work, the trouble at school is, is, has nothing to do with you. You didn't do this, but yet it's coming your way. Fast, quick, and in a hurry. Seems like you got a target on your back. Anybody ever feel like that? Just walk around with this neck. What's this on me? I can't get it off. It's this, this problem. This problem. So what does Daniel do? Look at Daniel chapter 2, verse 17. Then Daniel returned to his house. He didn't try to run, right? He turned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Hazariah. Thank God for people who love God. And he urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. This was serious, wasn't it? We are about to face some serious things. Amen? And, and we're not causing, you know, it's not us. We're not making the laws. We're not making decisions. And yet it's rolling our way. It's rolling our way. But we know God was faithful. God was faithful. See, when you're experiencing a personal problem, don't keep it to yourself. Huh? Don't keep it to yourself. Because it can overwhelm you. And then you, we, when you keep stuff, you start thinking crazy. You ever notice that sometimes? You start thinking weird stuff. You know, it, just, it just overloads. You need to tell some. Thank God I got some people. Y'all got people? No, seriously, I got some people who love the Lord. Who will pray? I'm looking at some of them in here right now. No, I talk to you up. Bam! The prayer goes up. Sometimes I don't even say, Pastor, I prayed for you. <laughs> okay. Thank God for people who love God. Does anybody need some people? No, I'm serious. If you need people, talk to me. Serious. Now is not the time to be by yourself. You need people who love God and know how to talk to God. I just don't ask anybody to pray for me. Do you realize that, right? Uh-uh, this is too, this is too, I mean, you let people look at your checkbook? Checkbook, that, that phrase is going to go out soon, a checkbook. <laughs> what are you talking about, a checkbook? We need people who know how to go before the Lord. That's what Daniel did. He had people. He didn't keep it to himself. Daniel was reading. Remember Daniel 9, 2? He, he's, he's overwhelmed over the prophecy. It was supposed to be 70 years, and now he hears about 2,300 years. And, and, and so he studies Jeremiah, the prophecy, the word of the Lord. And then after studying the word of the Lord, he begins to pray and fast. And he begins to think of another incident. He looks back over his shoulder to another incident that he had in his life. Daniel faces another problem. This brother is always in trouble, doesn't he? And he, ain't, and he ain't causing problems. He's just in trouble. When you love God, trouble will look for you. 
will come hunting for you sometime, it seems. So what's the trouble this time? Daniel 6, verse 4, if you have your Bibles, turn there. So the governors in Sarab sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. Oh, check this out. But they could find no charge or fault because he was what? Faithful, nor was there any error or fault found him. You know, people will talk about you. You don't have to do anything wrong. You can take it to the bank. Folk will talk about you. And if you're really good at your job, they will haunt you or try to haunt you. They will try to pick at you. Oh, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. You can do 99.9 things and they'll make that one point, half a point, as if you just messed up everything. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But that's not the time to compromise. Intensification. Intensification of trouble. So Daniel now has this, again, a work problem. We have work problems. We have school problems. Anybody, anybody dealing with jealousy at work? Folk just seem just jealous of you because of what you do. I mean, you know, just, your, just, the, way, just the way you, I mean, you just, all you do is just trying to work. You ain't trying to, you know, you're just working. You can't help if you're good. Keep being good, by the way. Keep being good. Keep being good. Keep being good. He wasn't perfect, but you know Jesus was perfect. He said, I will no longer talk with you, for the rule of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. The enemy tried to tempt Christ, and he could find nothing. Now is the time that you and I repent and live right. So when the devil talks about us, all he can do is lie on you. I don't want the brother to find anything true. Only the, only, if he's going to lie on me, then so I can't stop the devil from lying. Can you? I just want to make sure it's a lie. I, I, I can control that, that it's a lie. I can't control the lies, but I just want to make sure it's a lie. Thank God for that, huh? So Daniel was, 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 was faithful. And so what happens? They couldn't find anything on Daniel. So verse 7 says, so all the governors, so you talk about a conspiracy, huh? All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators, my, this, they got together, counselors and advisors, they consulted to establish a royal statue and says, hey, king, only you people will worship for 30 days, and if anyone violates it, with the lions, with the lions, aren't we approaching what Scripture tells us, that laws, the mark of the beast, that's not the time to compromise. That's not the time to say God will understand. God understands this. This is what he understands. He understands his ability to help us to make it. We've been talking all about that this morning in Sabbath school, right? Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. But these rascals could not deceive Daniel. These rascals couldn't trap him. These rascals knew Daniel would not compromise. But they also knew that Daniel would be faithful. They knew that. Time is coming where people will try to use your faith against you. And if that happens, so be it. But make sure you're faithful. That's not the time to compromise. They're going to try to use your faith against you. But then that's why you love God. You trust God. It's your relationship. It's all about him. It's all about him. So what happens? Look at verse 10. Oh, man. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home. He didn't try to run away. He went home, upstairs room, where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. How many times did the brother pray? <laughs> he, he didn't shrink his prayer time, did he? He didn't start canceling. I, I got a headache. <laughs> I, can't, I can't pray today. 
He didn't cancel his prayer. Three times he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks. What in the world does he have to give thanks for? His relationship with God. Because God doesn't change. Just had he had done before, Daniel did not stop praying. He did not use situational ethics. He did not try to say God will understand. He didn't try to pray, pray in secret. And notice, notice that these rascals, they got together as a group and went to Daniel and saw him, and Daniel didn't flinch. He just kept talking to his God, talking about end time prayer life, the quality of prayer life that you and I must have to make it through that when Jesus splits, opens the heaven, we won't run from him, but we'll run to him. Because that's what we've been talking about. So the king gave the command and, and, and brought Daniel and, 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 and cast him into the lion's den. But, but Nebuchadnezzar said something. He said, your God, whom you serve, will deliver you. Then he paced that, that, that stone. Well, you know the story. Was Daniel delivered? Do you think God is able to deliver you and me? No, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious with the, with the stuff that you go through right now. The stuff that you're going through right now. Is he able to make a way out of no way? And it's all because of he got on the cross. See, the cross validates how value you are to God. That the God of heaven and earth who lives outside, outside time came within time and, and came a part of his own creation just, to, just, just so that you can have a personal relationship with him. And see, if you're okay, praise God, but God has you alive right now because there's somebody in your family, there's a friend. You may even have an enemy that you don't like and they don't like you, and yet God still wants you to witness to them. Don't you realize we talk about the wise men when the birth of Christ on Christmas? It's because of this, these stories that these administrators and, 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 and leaders that they saw the face of Daniel and it's such impacted that their lives that they just kept telling the story and they kept reading the prophecies. Right here we see Christmas story being developed because of Daniel's faithfulness. You know, when you and I get to heaven, if, you, if, we're, if we're faithful, not because of anything we do, there's some stories around your name. You, seriously, there's some stories. You've got some stories that the angels are writing. Remember the books? There's books in heaven. They're writing this stuff down. Unfallen worlds will hear of your faithfulness. Folk are going to come up to you from whatever and just start asking you, huh, how did, how did you do that? How, how did you remain faithful on planet Earth when you were outnumbered? How did you do it when you didn't have any money? How did you remain a virgin? when everybody else was having sex? How did you, you were having sex and enjoying it and weren't married. You were having sex, you were single and enjoying it and then you repented. How did you do that? How did you do that? How, how did you start living right? How did you, getting high and enjoying it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I feel good. But then you came to the Lord. And then you stopped drinking. How did you do that? Stories. Stories. It's all about Jesus. That's the difference. Wednesday asking you to join us fasting. Amen? I mean, you, you, you and God to, to decide the length. Wednesday, 
We're praying. We need to see you in church or join us online. Because we need, this, this place needs to be filled. Amen? Sheep make sheep. That's your responsibility to fill this church. I'm going to help you. Amen, Pastor. Pastor Rogers, I get no amen on that one. The quality of our prayer life. Sister, whenever you're ready. The quality of our prayer life. You're my life, Lord Jesus. You're my life, Lord Jesus, you're everything to me. You're the sweetest song I sing. You are my everything. You are my everything. My hope. My soul, my strength, my shield, in you I live and have my being, all I want is Jesus. All I want is Jesus. Nothing in this world compares to what you're worth. You are my everything. You are my My hope, my soul, my strength, my shield, in you I live and have my being, you're my life. Jesus, you're my life, Lord, Jesus, you're everything to me, you're the sweetest song I sing, you are my everything, you are my That's true for you. Bow your head. Everything. There's some folk who need this experience that everything that God is, that you would take that and share your faith this passion, this urgency that you have to your friends, family, and people who don't like you, and you may not like them, but we're praying, we're playing, we're living. This is for eternal life. Jesus died on the cross so that we could have this hope, this strength, this might, this power for such a time as this. your desire to share your faith. Just raise your hands. Father, we thank you. You see your hands. We, we want to have that quality of prayer life as Daniel that will study your word, that, that our prayer life will be rooted in scripture, in the word of the Lord and not in our experiences. And that we'll fast and pray and and, 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 and just as Daniel went back home and, 
and, and, and opened the window and prayed. He, he was a witness. And just as Daniel, when he had stuff going on, he didn't stuff it in himself, but he told others. And they prayed, Lord, let us be helpers of one another. Let us make a difference. In Jesus' name I pray. And we all said, amen.